Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to Cape Nature Presents Learning to Hashtag Love Nature. My name is Clinton Bindvogel. I am the Learning Officer for Cape Nature. But what is it that Cape Nature does? We are a government organization that protects natural occurring plants and animals in the Western Cape. What are we going to learn today? We will learn more about plants and animals that we protect. And in that way, we would like to change your behavior. Just some housekeeping rules. You can say hi to us in your Q&A. You can say hi in the text box and you can use a text box for your questions and requests. And I would like to ask only the presenters and whose videos and speakers will be on. Any other further queries, you can direct to learning at capenature.co.za. And we will also have some fun. We will have some spot prizes. We will draw that after each session. And that will include a nice water bottle, nice recyclable straws, a stationery set, a pen, and a nice notebook. And let's start with our first presenter. Our first presenter is Antoinette Feldman. She will be presenting the wonderful world of insects, nature's super glue. Antoinette, over to you. Good morning, everybody. Let me just share my screen with you guys. As I, so today, um, like Clinton said, we'll, I'll be talking to you about the wonderful world of insects um, and why insects are called nature's super glue. We will be learning to hashtag love insects. So what is an insect? An insect is a creature that has a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Most of them are um, creatures with, with two to four pairs of uh, wings, and all of them have six legs. Insects also have exoskeletons. What is an exoskeleton? It's almost like a night suit of armor. It's a hard outer shell that protects the soft, squishy bits inside. Insects also have five eyes. They've got three small single eyes to see light and dark with, and they've got two large compound eyes to see movement. Are these insects? No, they're not. These are spiders. So the difference between spiders and insects are in the number of legs. Spiders have eight legs, whereas insects have six legs, remember? Spiders never have wings, and they also have um, uh, only a thorax and an abdomen, the head and the thorax is fused, whereas insects have a separate head and thorax. So 80% of all animal species are invertebrates. So invertebrate is a creature that doesn't have a backbone. And insects also are the biggest group of invertebrates that we have on Earth. They've got unbelievable biodiversity. For each of us, there are, there are about 200 million insects. And if you could put them all into one basket, all the insects on Earth will weigh 300 times more than all the humans on Earth. They also occur everywhere, on land, in water, some of them fly, some of them crawl. Insects are truly magnificent. You get the most beautiful insects as well. This is a large moth that you find in the tropics, beautifully colored. And then you get jewel colored bugs, you've got beautiful blue wasps, insects are magnificent. Okay, there are about 30 insect orders. An order is a group of insects that have specific characters in common. The largest, five largest insect orders are the Coleoptera, those are the beetles, the Lepidoptera, the butterflies and moths, 
Yamutra, those are the bugs, the true bugs so that have sucking mouth parts. You get Hymenoptera, which is a grouping of bees, wasps, and ants. And you've got the grasshoppers. And like I said, the largest insect order is Coleoptera. So from the 1.5 million described species of plants and animals on Earth, approximately 20% of them are beetles. So there are more than 400,000 species of beetles on Earth. And they come from in all shapes and sizes. Some of them are herbivores. That means they only eat plant material. And others eat um, 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 other insects and worms, which means they are carnivores. Some of them are really weirdly shaped, like this little guy here at the bottom with a long nose. They are brilliant colors. Like I said, all shapes and sizes. Did you know that a firefly is actually a beetle? It's not a fly. So the male fireflies have wings and they usually fly at night. The female fireflies are called glowworms. They don't have wings. And each species of firefly has its own unique code, almost like Morse code, which they use to communicate with each other and to find the true love of their lives. The largest insects are also beetles. These are the four largest beetles that you get on Earth. The biggest one is the South American longhorn beetle. You get the rhinoceros beetle, which is the heaviest insect on Earth. You get the Goliath beetle and the Hercules beetle. And in the middle, you can see a larvae of these creatures. This, that's a huge worm. The second biggest order is a Lepidoptera. Um, the Lepidoptera is a butterflies and moths. There are about 120,000 species, of which 24,000 are butterflies. So butterflies only see red, green, and yellow, and they taste with their feet. So if you put a, a, a banana outside and it gets squishy and old, the butterflies love that. And you'll see they come and sit on the a banana and they squiggle their feet around. That's how they taste. And then once they, they decide something tastes nice, they will start eating. The fastest flyer, the fastest flyer um, is a butterfly that flies about 60 kilometers per hour, but they usually fly about 8 to 19 kilometers per hour. Okay, so what's the difference between moths and butterflies? So moths mainly fly during the night. They're also usually dull colored. They rest with their wings um, um, next to their bodies. They've got huge fluffy bodies and the antennae are feather-like. Whereas butterflies are usually beautiful colored. We all know the difference um, between in that aspect. They fly during the day. They've got thin, delicate bodies and their antennae are thin and with a club at the end. Butterflies and moths um, come from caterpillars. And again, caterpillars come in all shapes and sizes, the most beautiful creatures on Earth, in my opinion. And the most interesting fact about caterpillars are they have got more muscles in their bodies than we've got um, as humans. Even that bodybuilder in the middle of the screen has fewer muscles than caterpillars have. Some more interesting facts about insects. A praying mantis has only one ear. That ear is situated between the front and the middle pair of legs, in the middle of their bodies. And they can also twist their heads 120 degrees to see um, prey um, insects behind them and in front of them. They are very um, well-organized carnivores. The most interesting fact for me, a grasshopper can eat his own body weight in food every day. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Especially now during lockdown, where all of us sit at home and we eat and we eat and we eat. The difference between us and grasshoppers are grasshoppers won't get fat. They found, also found some in, um, 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 fossils of cockroaches in amber, which shows that they cockroaches lived the first cockroach lived 80 million years before the first dinosaurs did, which makes them one of the oldest creatures on Earth. Honeybees occur on all continents except Antarctica, and a honeybee beats its wings about 11,000 times per minute. And very interesting years, and honeybees have hairs on their eyes, 
I think that's because they are very important pollinators and the hairs on their eyes protect their, they've got especially big eyes and the hairs protect their eyes against the pollen. So why are insects so important? First of all, they play a hugely important role as pollinators. All our fruit and vegetables are pollinated by insects. So just imagine pollination does, didn't take place. We would literally starve to death. 88% of all plants on earth are pollinated by insects. So we would really be in big trouble if we didn't have these pollinators. They also play an important role in pest control. Um, most of the carnivore, carnivorous insects eat pests. Um, pests that we as humans perceive as pests, for instance flies, they also eat um, um, pests on grains and they are used as biocontrol agents which means they actually attack pests, um, plant pests and yeah so they also play an important role there and insects recycle, they are the ultimate cleanup crew they break down dead animal and plant matter and recycle the nutrients back into the earth. Just imagine we didn't have dung beetles. Just imagine the piles and piles of poop that would be everywhere. These little creatures really play an important role. Some of you might know something about food chains. Insects are very important in the food chains. They are primary consumers, which means they eat the plant material and then store the energy in their little bodies and they are then in turn eaten by secondary and tertiary consumers. So if you look at that food chain that I've got on my slide, if you take away the grasshoppers, what will happen? The frogs will get fewer, the grass will get more, the snakes will probably move away, the hawks will have to move to something else as a prey item and so forth. Also, there's a large proportion of humans that rely on insects as a protein source for their um, um, daily um, food intake. Um, I know some of you go, ew, now, but it's a source of protein. Insects also make our world a lot more interesting. We use it as inspiration for art, for jewelry, for paintings. Um, we use insects in research. It's a very um, important research tool. For instance, fruit flies, they breed quite quickly and it takes only a small, small amount of time for them to go from egg to, um, to, uh, uh, um, to the insect itself. So we can do research on them to find out how things happen in nature. And a lot of people also keep insects as pets. Um, especially stick insects and cockroaches. Some people keep beetles. Um, but just make sure that you're allowed to keep the insects as pets. Sometimes you don't need to do that. So, next time you see insects, think about um, these little creatures' importance and don't just yell, ew, kill it, kill it. Um, they play a hugely important role in our society, and without them, we would truly be in big trouble. Thank you very much. So, I went through my presentation quite quickly, so we've got lots of time for questions and answers. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. So, any, any questions and answers? Let's see. Thank you, Antoinette. That was very interesting. Uh, I think I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. There are actually four questions. The first question is, uh, can creatures see color? Yes, yes. It says can see color. It depends on the species. Like I said, with um, the butterflies, I know they see reds and, and yellows, especially. Um, it's based on the UV perception. So depending on what species they are, whether they are pollinators, whether they are carnivores, um, that, will that will determine what colors they see. Um, I hope that answers your, your question. That was from Lana. Uh, Lana is also asking, what is the thing that makes the firefly glow? Ah, very, very interesting question. So they've got a phosphorus um, chemical substance. It's a, it's a phosphorus um, um, substance that they store inside their bodies. 
it's um, it's not it doesn't get warm. People seem to think that it gets warm. It actually absorbs um, light during the day, and then it's almost like a glow in the dark toy or a glow in the dark um, wall sticker. It abs absorbs um, light during the day and it supercharges, and then they use that during the during the night to communicate with. So it's a complex chemical. Um, um, a way of communicating, they have to switch it on, switch it off. Um, yeah, so it's a phosphorus um, substance that helps them know. Another question, um, Antoinette from Lynn Shabalala. Can insects see people? Yes, they can. Um, I'm thinking now specifically of a fly. If you try to catch a fly, it's very difficult. They move off quite quickly. So the compound eyes actually um, consist out of hundreds of lenses. So they don't see one picture as we do. They see several um, pictures that their brain then forms a, 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 like a, a compound or a complex picture with. So they actually see everything in slow motion, but they will be able to see humans and they see us coming. Um, if you try to touch a, a praying mantis, you will also see they will turn their heads towards you and they will try and duck away. So they definitely can see us. A few other questions, um, Antoinette. Uh, one is from Ruan Governor. Um, is there anywhere insects don't live? Yes, Antarctica. It's too cold and it's covered with ice most of the year. And um, also the North Pole, um, the North Pole is actually not a continent, it's just a sheet, sheet, sheet of ice. Um, but you get other invertebrates that live on Antarctica, but they're not insects, um, they're other groups. And they usually freeze during the winter and then fall out in summer. Um, yeah, Thank otherwise you. you get them everywhere. Thank you, Antoinette. Uh, Amelie Toussaint, I hope I pronounce your surname correct. Do insects sleep? <laughs> yes, they do. Unless they're nocturnal. Well, then they sleep during the day. Um, all living creatures need to sleep, um, depending on whether they are creatures that, live during the, that are active during the day, diurnal or nocturnal. Those are active during the night. Um, the, the insects that are active during the day usually hide and sleep in a safe place during the night, and those that are active during the during night time sleep in safe places during the day to rest. I will uh, answer, uh, Anthony. There's one more or two more answers that you give. To, have to give to questions. Um, okay. Uh, then, uh, audience um, and attendees, um, you can also direct your questions and requests. Uh, to learning at capenature.co.za and then uh, Antoinette will answer you directly uh, based on your email if that's a, if, if you are okay with that. Uh, sure. Simon Goldstein, if we put out a banana, what butterflies would we attract to our garden? Um, what butterflies? Yes. And there's quite a few species that, um, that are, they, butterflies usually drink nectar from flowers, but some of the, the citrus type butterflies, those are usually the black and yellow butterflies, they will be attracted to bananas. Um, Last question for this session, um, Ava Peters, uh, did they use firefly as lights in the olden days? <laughs> no, they didn't. I know they usually show this in, in, in um, animation movies. They, they don't make enough light to use as a light source. Um, I think a lot of people probably thought fireflies are fairies during the night. Um, but yeah, no, they didn't use them as lights. But it's a great idea. Okay. Uh, thank you, Antoinette. Um, we will be um, doing the drawing of the prizes now. Um, and uh, yeah, and we've done the draw. 
and that is number 57. I'm just looking at what is number 57 here for this session. Brenda Zambezi. Well done, Brenda. Congratulations. We will be in contact with you and um, our staff will then hand over your prize. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Um, that is the end of the first session. Um, we will take a short break. Um, and then we will come back. And when we do come back, we will have a nice, another speaker, a nice presentation. The Web of Life, all about interdependence. That will be done by Edward Adonis. So see you at half past two. Just a, oh, sorry, I just made this mistake. Um, it will be at half past one. Sorry, audience, we will be back at half past one. Thank you.